Now we're live. Uh, today is August 14th. This is a special committee on long-term health care, uh, 2023. Madam Clerk, will you call roll? Alderwoman Boyd. Alderwoman Sonye. Present. Christine Ingracia. Danielle Spradley. Jamie Opsel. Present. Marjorie Moore. Present. Harold Braswell. Present. Chris Beckley. Cassandra Hoffman. Kaufman. Present. Sorry, Kaufman. Present. Lavita Richardson. Cindy Jackson. Kevin Anthony. Present. Andrew Lackey. Present. Laura, Laura Barrett. Present. Kathleen Holmes. Annalise Stover. Present. Chair Aldrich. Present. Alderwoman Boy. Christine Ingracia. Danielle Spradley. Chris Beckley. Lavita Richardson. Cindy Jackson. Kathleen Holmes. We have 10 present. We have a quorum. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. With that, I would like to make a motion to approve the minutes from August 7th meeting. Uh, do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. All right, we're going to move into committee discussion. Um, so for this discussion, uh, we potentially could have had the city councilor on her schedule, did not permit for her to be able to make it uh, to this meeting. I know it was important to have potentially our city councilor on as we move into the next stages, uh, as I'm getting really excited to really craft and get down to the nitty gritty of coming up with recommendations and delivering a report to the Board of Aldermen. I remember during one of our presentations with either the building division or health department, uh, that came up of potentially having our city councilor on to ensure any policies that we actually come up or recommendations, hopefully get adopted to be policies, um, what can actually be enforceable from the city. So hopefully as we move forward with uh, the potential uh, recommendation process, uh, I think before it is released, uh, a conversation can be had uh, with the city councilor to figure out uh, what enforcement uh, from our recommendations actually can be enforced if we need to tweak anything um, on those recommendations. But uh, as of right now, uh, we don't have any speakers today uh, on my list. I know uh, one potentially could have came forward, but we wanted to uh, ensure her security and safety is uh, OK, especially with these meetings being public. Um, so maybe we'll get a reading testimony from the individual. But as of today, we don't have any speakers. Uh, the conversation I want to move into in an open discussion is talking about moving forward now, uh, coming up with recommendations. Uh, ideally, the board goes back September 15th, uh, which is probably about, I think, four uh, weeks away. Um, they come back on a Friday. It would be ideal to try to have if not fully completed, at least a rough draft um, of those recommendations uh, ready to go. So when the board does come back, that those can be uh, delivered to the board, uh, to the president, uh, so that the recommendations we come up with, uh, hopefully all the people will uh, sponsor those recommendations and actually turn into city ordinance. But as uh, far as the schedule moving forward with recommendations, uh, I met with Laura uh, uh, over last week, we did a um, interview with myself, and that would be more of the announcements and worker from Hillside at NPR. And during that um, during that interview, uh, me and Laura talked about kind of a, a framework uh, for how we can move forward with the recommendations. Um, so hopefully, uh, sometime this week, Laura, if you want to jump in uh, after I speak, please do. Hopefully, sometime this week, we'll just send out a rough draft of what the recommendations can look like. Not necessarily, not necessarily saying that will be the framework of our final report we put out, but just a rough draft to kind of get our um, brains kind of working on how do we want to move forward. I know we talked about covering uh, the high levels, of course, recommendations from the local area, the state level, federal. 
uh, as well as making sure uh, workers' voices are uplifted and other things as well that can go into that report. Um, I will be sending out a, a calendarly invite uh, to all committee members, uh, hoping that sometime next week, next Monday, uh, won't work for myself. And I definitely want to make sure that uh, I'm there as we move forward with the recommendations. But we'll send out a calendarly link uh, of days next week that we all can meet, uh, hopefully at the SEIU building. Uh, roughly just if you could schedule two hours uh, of your time so that we can start to put the framework together of what the final recommendation will look like from this committee and potential if we need to come up with smaller working groups that would either dive into local recommendations, state recommendations, federal recommendations, or a committee that would uh, be tasked to kind of get workers' voices or any other smaller committee that we may uh, come, with, come up with as a committee. Um, before I pass it on to any committee members for discussion, did you want to add in anything uh, kind of on that uh, rough draft of a framework, uh, Laura? I think you covered it really well. Um, so I think, you know, this the stuff that we've been talking about in this committee, fortunately, quite a few of the experts have had similar ideas in terms of what actually needs to get done um, in, in order to start to fix the system. So I think just thinking about what are the powers that the city or county jurisdictions have versus what do we know the state needs to do and then what is the federal government. Um, you know, there's, there's those proposed rulings from the Biden administration that are coming down. How, you know, so that's federal level. We know the state is in charge of a lot of the um, inspections uh, and the enforcement of the regulations that they get from the federal government, from CMS. So how do we have re recommendations that go there? We also know they fund voice and other important entities. And so how is that you know, funding remaining strong? And then what can the city level really do? So I think just making sure we've got everything in the right categories with the, um, the language that is you know, strong, but not, you know, but realistic, I mean, I think is, is really important. Um, clearly, we've got a long way to go in order to turn Missouri around. Um, I mean, it was pretty, just, you guys did a great job, uh, Alderman Aldridge and, um, and Gabby and Chad Davis from KWMU was on there too. But, you know, just another report confirming that Missouri is a uh, second uh, you know, second lowest in terms of the number of staff hours to um, residents in nursing homes, is, it's, it's discouraging. So we've got a long way to go with that. So having practical, reg, uh, you know, recommendations, I think is really important. Um, some of you all had taken a look at that briefing paper that we prepared, that SEIU prepared originally when we started the committee. I think it's part of the Google Docs that we have. There are some in there, um, some recommendations, and I think that'll be helpful. The other part of this, I, and I'll just end here. Right? Alderman Aldrich, I'm sorry, I'm going on for a minute. But um, there's so many things that have come up in this committee, you know, for-profit hospices, uh, you know, term, um, daycare that's available, um, you know, even walkable, livable communities and food deserts and, uh, you know, other kinds of issues that we've really talked about in terms of if you can't buy enough food, that makes it very difficult to, you know, stay at home, you know, so like those kinds of things we've really become aware of. So like figuring out sort of like what are, you know, we know that stuff is being taken care of at other places in city government, but is there anything we want to say about it? Probably not. But I think it's important for us to kind of consider how focused the, the uh, recommendations are going to be as well. So the briefing paper, they're very focused. Um, but if there's more general stuff that we want to say about walkable, livable communities, affordable housing, uh, the folk, I mean, one of the major things is, you know, how much are we going to say about mental health resources that are available and how much are we going to say about uh, folks who are unhoused? So I think that's all stuff to consider as we're as we're moving into the recommendation phase here. Um, and I'll say one more thing: we're it seems like we're one of the only city bodies that's actually taken this on. So I think it, it's worth a little extra time to make sure we're getting it, you know, as as understandable, as clear, 
as focused as we possibly can so that other cities can, you know, take a look at what we've done and go, okay, we can do that. You know, let's, let's figure out what we're going to do in this city and use our, our work as a model, hopefully, and hopefully they even improve on it. But uh, it's, it's, since we are first, it's, it's, I think it's worth the extra effort just to make sure we're doing it in a way that is understandable for folks. And Ms. Laura, if you could, um, that old briefing, and I know you're working on a new, like I say, retro effort of framework, but for the O one, um, since that was uh, probably happened uh, uh, during the previous committee, same committee, but previous time, if you could send that in the email and also make sure that uh, BOA clerk is on that so that we could put that in the drive so we could just have that as a resource. And now that I'm thinking about it, Ms. Uh, Moore, when you get a second, uh, you presented a very great presentation in PowerPoint. If you also, uh, when you get a moment, if you can send that in the drive and make sure that the BOA clerk is tagged in it. So when we do pull all these uh, information together that we can have in one spot. And if there is any important information from the previous committee um, that need to be added and drive from any members, please send that to the larger group with the BOA clerk. My goal is to also uh, compile all the minutes from previous meetings to our current meeting. Uh, to have just kind of a snap it and some of it may be redundant from some of the framework that uh, Ms. Law is working on, but just getting a, a snapshot of a lot of high points and stuff that was brought out of each meeting so that we can also have that as a resource when we're going through um, the recommendation process for uh, this committee's work to bring to the full board. Um, you're on mute, Ms. Laura. That might include, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Um, Andrew Wang's uh, presentation as well, Professor. Yes, any, um, uh, Professor Wang, any uh, presentations or um, ones beforehand, if it was members that I need to reach out to, I will look at the old notes or uh, people that came in front of us, I will look at the old notes and see who also presented in front of the committee so I can try to get those presentations out there. If I inbox any members trying to get those uh, um, presentation or presenters email, please help me out with that because I may not have it because it was prior of my time and also work with uh, former chair and Gracia to try to get those contact information. But I would try to get all of those presentations um, in the Google Drive so we can just have that as um, some good information as we go into our recommendations. Uh, I see Ms. Moore hand raise. You have the floor, Ms. Moore. Thank you. Um, I was also going to say, I think um, Dr. Wang also produced a couple of um, maps that he shared with uh, Dr. Braswell and I. And I, I think, I don't know, Harold, do you still have those? Um, I could dig for them. I think I have. Yeah, them. no, I have them. And, I can, and I'll, I'll reach out to Andrew too, just so he's on the same page. You know, he, he always had, I think he'll be really excited and thrilled to be featured in the report and the committee's deliberations in some ways. And we could, um, on, we're just, uh, yes. And and I and I will upload those to the Google Drive with Andrew's permission. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm trying to monitor the check every one second. Thank you. Uh, we are, uh, Ms. Laura, we're all in the Google Drive. So I think most of us, is. has everyone been able to see the uh, Google Drive? I'm not sure if everyone actually has Google now that I think about it. But if you haven't been able to see the Google Drive, just raise your hand. Uh, every time uh, minutes or from each committee are completed, um, the um, our chief clerk puts it in the Google Drive any like documents that is sent uh, or that was presented to the committee, either our clerk, uh, Ms. Ora, or our chief, um, our chief clerk puts it in the Google Drive. I see Ms. Cassandra, is your hand up because you don't have access to the Google Drive? Yes, I joined the committee later and don't recall having access to the drive. Okay, I gotta make sure you get access. Do you have Google as your uh, main source of emailing or do you use a different one? Okay. Uh, I will check with the clerks to see how that works uh, for people who do not have it. I think they've been invited to everyone if you're uh, even if you don't have Google and we just got to figure out how to get access uh, to you. But I will uh, make note of that so we can uh, ensure that you have access to the Google Drive. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. 
Uh, Madam Vice Chair, earlier I seen that your hand was up. Did you have uh, anything you want to say, Vice Chair from I'm Ward? I'm fine. Okay. Um, look at my notes here, make sure I cover everything. Um, again, be on the lookout by either this evening or tomorrow. Like I said, I'm gonna try to send out a calendarly uh, link um, to get some dates that uh, everyone, if we all can come together and meet next week. I will also talk with Ms. Laura to see what day and time works best for us to be able to meet over at SEIU. It will be our first in-person uh, kind of get together. And I've talked with staff that we don't have to do it uh, via Zoom live. So we'll be able to um, uh, have conversations about what those recommendations look like and our following meetings leading up to that. We most likely won't be on here as we are crafting the report um, of the recommendation at any point during that time as we come up with a recommendation. Again, this is our committee, the People's Committee. So if there is somebody that we want to bring uh, forward to maybe hear just a little bit more of a vantage point of an expert, uh, we can always schedule uh, a meeting that works with the committee uh, and set up a Zoom to make sure that they come in front of us, that's us live, and then we can have that information for the following report uh, of our findings. Any comment, discussion, or questions on the recommendation process moving forward? If not seeing none, like I say, it was going to be a quick one because we didn't have any speakers. And now we're kind of really moving into the heart of the sound. It's available next week. Okay. So um, I will connect with you, Ms. Lord, to see how we can get Sam in. And I know STL TV at first uh, wasn't sure if they were able to come to the hall, I will I will try to figure out how we can potentially try to get Sam and to uh, present and also uh, us move forward on the recommendation, hoping that maybe we can get STL TV over to um, the SEIU building to at least get Mr. Sam Brooks um, kind of findings and then have that on record. So I will uh, connect with STL TV to see what we can do about that and what that looks like of getting him either uh, in front of the committee uh, or if I uh, need to be even potential written um, testimony so we can have that in the notes to have that for the report and any slides that he may have. Um, if no other discussion though on the uh, recommendation, like I say, it was gonna be a quick one with not having any speakers this week, really just wanted to uh, kind of get ready for us to move into our next phase of this committee as we're coming up with the recommendation so we can present it to the board, ideally before um, September 15th or rough draft, but that isn't a hard stop date. I just know the Board of Aldermen goes back in on the 15th. Um, so it'd be great to have recommendations in front of them. Uh, maybe some Alder people will pick up those recommendations and can start moving on legislation, but that's not the end of session. Um, so if it's a little after the 15th, we're not, uh, won't be in trouble. But like I say, if we have a rough draft, uh, as we get closer to the 15th, that will be helpful. Um, that's all the discussion that I had on the final report. Does any other committee member have any discussion or things that they want to bring up? If not, I'll move to announcement. One quick announcement I do want to uh, bring up. Ms. Laura had already mentioned it. Uh, it should be out there now publicly on S, uh, STL Public Radio on the website. Myself, Gabby, one of uh, a CNAs at uh, Hillside, uh, and Chad Davis, who uh, wrote a report on the state of Missouri long-term health care and how um, not just St. Louis, but the whole state in general kind of ranks at the top of worst facilities, uh, lack of shortages and lack of um, the ability to just pay their workers. There was a previous article about that with Chad, which Ms. Moore was featured on. And then this last week, uh, myself and Gabby, who's a Hillside worker, was on uh, STL uh, NPR talking about the work of this committee. And then Gabby gave a very beautiful testimony of the work. Uh, I think she's been eight years the seat. Um, and what that has looked like. So uh, please check it out. I will say there's a lot of energy uh, right now around people 
uh, talking about long term health care facilities. So uh, the work of this committee uh, uh, has already been hugely important. But uh, I think as we continue to get closer to the um, uh, the finish line, like Ms. Laura said, there's no other body in the St. Louis region right now that's just focusing on the condition of these long term health care facilities. So uh, this work is uh, not just important, but I think it's game changing for our region, for the city and potentially for the city. So, um, thank you to all the members and committed. Look at it. Uh, I see the clerk hand up, but really, clerk, uh, real quick, yeah. real Madam. quick. Okay, uh, Alderman, I had a quick question. Now, for next Monday, there won't be a meeting. And is that my understanding? Is this going to be the last one, or are we trying to figure out if we're going to have one off site? We're going, I'm trying to, I'm going to figure out if we could try to have one off site and potentially with one, if we have a presenter, uh, if not presenting, seeing if they can present um, potential written testimony that we can have in the drive so committee members can have it. So um, I'm not going to call for a meeting uh, on this meeting uh, and any if we do have an official meeting, I will make sure that it is uh, ahead of time so that SCOTV and you know, Madam Clerk, but uh, it looks like it will probably be offsite uh, for the next meeting with a potential speaker, which I will work that out and figure out what that looks like. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, all right, I'll email you, or the, the clerk will. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then, yeah, in that announcement, I just want to thank each committee member for all the uh, hard work that you have put into this committee prior to me as chair. Uh, and your commitment uh, that you continue to ensure that uh, this committee is being successful. Uh, thank you to every member for uh, members that invited speakers, all the members that have participated in discussion, uh, all the ideas that you guys have put forward to this committee so that we can actually come up with, I think, some really strong recommendations. And like I say, be a game changer for the city. So even though it's been a short period for myself, it has truly been an honor to be part of this committee and, and uh, super Thankful for all the work that uh, also previous Alderwoman um, and Gracia did, uh, Madam Vice Chair Boyd did, uh, previous Alderwoman Middlebrook did uh, to really make sure that this was up off the ground. Um, and with that, unless someone have announcements, any announcements, any other announcements? I would like to make a motion to adjourn for the meeting. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all. Just be on the lookout for your email for that calendar link. Have a great one. Thank you.